in the last stream, we were working on setting up a new mob farm to allow us to finally get some mob drops. And right at the end of the last episode, we did manage to get our first ender pearl here. And this is going to allow us to upgrade our mob farm just a little bit in that we can get rid of these oak chests and the hoppers that are pumping into them and replace that with one vacuum hopper that's going to collect all of those mob drops and potentially even some mob experience for us all in one location. So we do have a few options here. There is the ender hopper from Dark Utilities. This will vacuum up nearby items and put them into an inventory. Fairly easy to make. It's five obsidian, one hopper, and one eye of ender. There is the vacuumulator from Thermal Expansion. This one also fairly easy to make and only requires an ender pearl, not an eye of ender. And then there is the absorption hopper from Mob Grinding Utilities, which is a similar recipe to the Ender Hopper. It does require an Eye of Ender. However, I think it is the best option in that it is going to allow us to collect experience that we can then use in the future for either enchantments or for further crafts, especially if we do want to get a faster mob farm. I mentioned the Dreadful Dirt previously. This is dirt that spawns a lot more hostile mobs a lot faster. To get that, you need the Cursed Chicken Feed, this stuff right here, which does require four buckets of experience. And so being able to collect that experience automatically with the Absorption Hopper is going to be quite useful. Otherwise, the XP orbs are just going to sit on the ground next to our Mob Masher until they despawn. Now, if we want to make it, of course, we need an Eye of Ender, which requires a Blaze Powder. Thankfully, we can get Blaze Powder by sifting dust. However, unlike in the last episode where we were just sifting with this string mesh, we need to upgrade this mesh to, I think, at least a diamond mesh if we want to have a chance of getting Blaze Powder. Never mind, you can use an iron mesh to get compressed dust. A diamond mesh does also work, as does an emerald mesh and a netherite mesh. But for us, iron should be fine. To get an iron mesh, we first need to upgrade our string mesh to a flint mesh. Thankfully, we do have more than the required six flint for that. And then once we have a flint mesh, which I believe looks something like this, we can then upgrade the flint mesh to an iron mesh. And then if we take some of the dust that we made in the last episode and compress that down into compressed dust, we should then be able to drop in our iron mesh. And if we sift this, we should have a somewhat decent chance of getting some blaze powder. Nice. We can then craft that into an Eye of Ender. And now we just need to get three obsidian and one hopper. So the hopper we can get super easily. It's just wood and iron. The obsidian is potentially a little trickier for us to get. It shouldn't be too hard because one thing we could do if we really wanted to is just take some water from here, head through into the mining dimension. And if we were to pour this water over a nearby pool of lava, because we upgraded our Tinker's Pick with the diamond upgrade, it does now have a diamond mining level and so is capable of mining obsidian. And so there is a lot of lava here, but I'm thinking if we go a little further afield, I'm pretty sure that we did see another pool of lava over in this direction. The reason I'm not using that first pool of lava is that one of the things I would like to do in today's stream is get some fire seeds, and those fire seeds also require lava. So I do want to have at least some lava available that we can bucket up for the future. But this here is gonna be more than enough obsidian for not only the absorption hopper, but also potentially a nether portal as well. Once we're back in the overworld, one thing the Twitch chat has been recommending that we do for quite some time now is type slash set home. This is going to set our home point, and basically what this means is that in the future, if we want to get back to our home point, we can just type in slash home, and it will teleport us back to that home point. Apparently, it doesn't work that well on slabs. So let me try that again. Let me do slash set home. I'm going to do it here on the solid logs. Now, if I walk away and once again type slash home, it puts me right back here in front of the colossal chest. And then even better is you can type slash back and it takes you back to where you were before. And if you happen to be falling through the void, if you can get it within the right period of time, you can do a slash home and of course uh, you die, which is not ideal, um, but could be quite nifty. Uh, you've just got to make sure that if you do do a slash back or a slash home, that you're not stood on a slab when it happens because apparently it doesn't work on slabs, which is something I learned the hard way. Either way, now that we have the obsidian, we should be able to do something like this, get ourselves a chest, 
get ourselves a hopper and this we get the absorption hopper which we can now use to collect all of the drops from the mob farm we do have the iron chests mod installed which i think for the time being is going to be our best bet here eventually we probably are going to want to set up some kind of storage draw setup for all of these mob drops also uh, we definitely want to make sure we have that chest before we start breaking the other chests let me dump some of this into here and then what we'll do is we will grab enough wood to make a standard minecraft chest we should then be able to get eight iron and upgrade that to an iron chest like this if we want to upgrade that to a gold chest we do need gold ingots and so what i might do real quick actually we don't have gold ingots just yet but i think it's probably worth detouring for a quick minute going through to the mining dimension trying to find some gold ore and then coming back and making the gold seeds because there's been quite a few things that we've wanted to craft now that we can't because we don't have enough gold for it right now we do have the ability to make eight gold from the four chunks that we have but we do need i think two blocks and two ingots if we want to make the gold seeds so real quick i'm going to head back through to the mining dimension and let's see if we can't find just a little bit of gold to make these gold seeds happen one two three four imperium and then one two gold ingots and two blocks of gold with of course the prosperity seed base gets us the gold seed and so now we can just take this and add it to one of our farms i think what i'm going to do going forward is probably start merging these farms of course we could continue to build out more and more farms uh, for individual resources like this but i don't really think we need to for example right here we've got so much iron i think we could take half of this farm you know the first four lines here and dedicate that to gold i don't think we need to have a, a full farm dedicated to iron the crops grow so fast and we get so much every time we harvest that i think just having half the farm dedicated to gold and half the farm dedicated to iron is gonna be fine and somebody in the Twitch chat had a pretty good idea that I quite liked, and that was to kind of cap off these little uh, Dark Oak pillars here with the block of choice for that farm. Uh, so we put down some Inferium blocks here around the Inferium farm, and I think that looks kind of cool. I think I might do the same with the Diamond blocks and, you know, maybe half and half with the Iron and the Gold, and uh, we got the Coal over there as well. So I think I might start doing that as we expand out and put more seed farms down. All right, so we've got a full area of Gold Seeds, or at least half an area of Gold Seeds there, and so I might pivot a little bit here. We were intending, or my intention I should say was, to utilize the gold essence to make the gold ingots and then to uh, use those gold ingots to upgrade our iron chest to a gold chest, which we could have done. But then the Twitch chat did remind me that we do have this Colossal Chests mod installed. And so we could potentially just put another Colossal Chest on top of the mob farm here. And I think that's going to be larger than any like iron chest that we could make. The highest tier is a diamond chest. And the diamond chest is nowhere near as big in inventory as the colossal chest. And then somebody else in the Twitch chat mentioned that there are different tiers of colossal chest. You can make a regular one, then a copper one, then an iron one, then a gold one. And then finally, you can make a diamond colossal chest. And so now that we have access to infinite diamonds via our diamond farm over here, and the fact that we can just harvest more of these and keep spreading these diamond seeds, I think I might try making a diamond colossal chest to place on top of the mob farm to store our mob drops in. In the future, we are going to start working towards refined storage. In fact, I think later in this episode, we're going to start working towards being able to get into refined storage. And once we do, we can just connect up the colossal chest from the mob farm to our refined storage system, much like we're going to do with this one as well. And... At that point, it's probably just going to hold all of the mob drops for potentially the remainder of the pack. So to make the Colossal Chest Wall Diamond Edition, you just craft diamonds around logs. So it is expensive and it's going to take a, a fair bit of essence to do it. But that is that Colossal Chest. I might not make one quite as big. I don't know if you can make, actually, like a 2x2 two two little one. We do need to get a Colossal Chest Core. How expensive is the Diamond Core? It is super easy to make let me check real quick can i do one two three four five six seven eight i totally can and this chest is real big like if i put in a few items here and we start scrolling down it's a big chest it might be a similar size to our bigger chest that we already have i'm intrigued actually as to how these work let me put some iron ingots in if i break one of these blocks with a pickaxe apparently and then i put it back down it still retains the iron i think it's only if we break the core that all of the items spew out which is interesting so 
it is possible if we put this chest in the right place, it's possible that we could then make it bigger in the future as and when we need it. While we're here, let's fix up the mob farm a little bit. We might as well put these back down now there's no need for them. Of course, we are going to empty this chest out in just a second. We got a diamond shovel. Interesting. As a uh, as a mob drop. That is good to know. But now, if we head on up to the top of this farm, I'm thinking of building it up here. But if we want to give ourselves space to make this bigger in the future, what I think we'll do is we'll put down potentially the colossal chest core here, and then we can build the rest of the colossal chest for now, just like this. And that means that in the future, we could make this up to a six by six you know we could even move it one further forward but i think six by six by six is going to be more than enough th than we're ever going to need for the remainder of the pack here so doing that should give us a ton of space and uh, also give us the ability to expand it in the future now if i'm not mistaken i don't think that we can pump into the colossal chest via the colossal chest core normally the way the absorption hopper works is you place it down and then inside of it you select which way you want the items to be sent. So if I click the up button, it now has this little connector that's gonna pump items upwards. If I select the right side, which is east apparently, and set that to item, I don't think this works, but let me test it. If I drop an item, oh, it totally does. Okay, I was under the impression we might have needed a colossal chest interface uh, because this says it works with pipes and hoppers, but apparently that's not the case. Apparently this does indeed work just fine. And so now, if we look at the uh, show area here, the area looks like it covers. Oh, it doesn't quite cover. It's a little too high. That's fine, because what you can do in here is you can just offset it down by one. And there we go. Now it's big enough. Uh, we could also go ahead and make that a little smaller as well if we wanted to. If we bring this in just a little bit uh, on those sides like that, that is going to make it kind of perfect. The reason I'm doing that is just so that if I accidentally drop something here, I don't want it to be collected and put in the uh, the colossal chest there. I really only want it to be mob drops that end up inside of the colossal chest. But now that that's taken care of, we can go ahead and move all of these drops up into that colossal chest and I could really do with a better system for getting up there. Again, once we get more ender pearls, we could potentially look at uh, getting some elevators, which would make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. But uh, this is just going to store all of the mob drops going forward. And so now I should be able to fairly safely get rid of this chest over here. And this hopper as well. We do want to make sure that we put a block under that hopper. Otherwise, the mobs will just fall through the vector plate, which is not what we want. And I think I might have done the same thing here where it's possible I did leave the hopper underneath this vector plate. I did, and we don't want that hopper to be there. Otherwise, it's not going to work. That vector plate did get picked up by our vacuum hopper, and so should now be over in here. It is. I'll also take my glass, and I'll take the hopper back as well. Let's get rid of all of the excess stone there. Place down the vector plate once again, facing in the right direction. There we go. Boom and boom. That is all done. And yeah, that should now just work, collecting all of the mob drops, dropping them into the colossal chest. And whenever we need a specific mob drop, we can just go and take a look at that colossal chest and see if it has what we need. Chat is also right that we can go ahead and get rid of this lever here now. It's not strictly necessary. There's no uh, practical benefit to doing it, really. But I think it is going to look a little bit nicer if we just have the, uh, the mob masher on top of the redstone as opposed to having just a random lever on the wall. So let us quickly grab the mob masher, the dark glass. We'll take the lever away, I guess. That is fine. And then let's do... Get rid of these, I guess. And then let's do this and this. Nice. I think that's going to look a little bit nicer going forward, and uh, it's also going to work just as well. And there we go. I think that looks a little bit nicer and should work just fine. And of course, in the future, we could look, if we wanted to, at making that mob farm faster with something like Dreadful Dirt, if it turns out we need even more mob drops than we are currently getting. Now that that's taken care of, though, what I do want to work towards, as I mentioned earlier, is refined storage. Refined storage is going to allow us to access and craft with the Colossal Chest much more easily than we're currently doing, and it's also going to allow us to auto-craft, which will make things like these solar panels easier to make in the future, and it's also going to prepare us for some of the later game here. So uh, the very end game here is these creative items, and if we're going to craft any of these, we're going to need some form of auto-crafting. So if we want to get into refined storage, we need to head up to the top right of the quest book here and the main ingredient that we don't currently have access to is nether quartz now there is a quest over here to head through to the nether but i am fairly certain that the nether is quite simply just a void 
we can test it because we do have enough obsidian. And so real quick, I will go ahead and grab uh, some of the flint out of the system. And so if we just craft up a flint and steel, we can go and build this nether portal somewhere. I might put it down on the lower level here. I might actually put it at the end of this path. A nifty trick here that the Twitch chat did teach me is if you put a block in your offhand and then use the wand, it will place down just that block. Obviously not particularly useful for these two here, but it's uh, faster than trying to put down uh, five at a time. It's easier to do like the nine at a time like this. So whenever you hold the block in your offhand, it will put that block down, but it will use whatever block you're looking at as the reference. So in this case, it was using the uh, dark oak logs as the reference. So it'll put slabs down wherever there are dark oak logs, if that makes sense. Uh, either way, let's go ahead and temporarily at least, I'm gonna put the nether portal down right about here and boom. And yeah, this is just a void nether, which might come in useful at some point in the future if we want to spawn specific nether mobs. I do see that we have a nether fortress that's not too far away, but getting there could still be quite tricky. And so if the nether isn't going to give us what we want, there are other ways we can get these things. For example, soul sand here, we can get using the barrels that we used initially to make clay. If we put witch water inside a barrel and then right click it with sand, that gets us soul sand. And witch water we can get by using ancient spores, which we do have. These ancient spores you get from sifting dirt. They're a low chance, only 5%, but if you get them, you can then right click them onto dirt. And so let's grab a little bit of dirt out of our system here. And then let's go find a little spot to put this down and let's also steal. Actually, you know what? I think we could just put it right about here. If we just do this, and this, I'm fairly certain that's close enough to where if I put a bucket of water in there, it isn't going to transform. Okay, so it turns out it actually has to be on the block itself. That's fine. I'm willing to lose a little bit of mycelium here. That's not a problem. Let's go ahead and break this block, place down the dirt, and then right click on the ancient spores. Now that's going to start to transform. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, let's F3 air to fix that little glitch. And you'll see in the top left that the progress is going up and eventually you get witch water. Once you have witch water, we can then take some sand, which we might not have because I think I turned almost all of it into dust. Yeah, we got a little bit. So uh, once we have sand and we can right click that on and we get soul sand. Nice. We can then sift that soul sand for a chance to get nether quartz and nether wart. It does appear that you can't sift soul sand in its compressed form. So you do need at least a flint mesh to get nether quartz from the soul sand or from the compressed soul sand and that chance does go up when you go to an emerald mesh it doesn't go up past the diamond mesh so diamond uh, is after iron then it goes emerald then netherite usually but the chances of getting a nether quartz doesn't go up any more after diamond and so i think what we should probably do is take our iron mesh out of here and if we grab six diamonds, which we should have in the chest here, we can once again upgrade our mesh from an iron mesh to a diamond mesh. And now if we can get nine soul sand, we can sift a compressed soul sand and try and get ideally four nether quartz. If we can get four nether quartz, we can of course then use that to make a nether quartz seed. And once we have a nether quartz seed, we are good to go on essentially an infinite amount of nether quartz. For that to work though, we are definitely going to need more sand. And so once again, I'm gonna go through the same rigmarole of getting some more stone essence, some more dirt essence, getting some gravel, turning it into sand, and then we'll spend a bit of time at the witch water until we have at the very least nine soul sand. All right, so nine soul sand later, let's craft that into one compressed soul sand. And then if we sieve that over in our new diamond mesh, we should hopefully get at least a couple of Nether quartz, we did, we got 23, which is very nice indeed. And so if we want to turn those into nether quartz seeds, we just need four Turtium Essence, four nether quartz, and the Prosperity Seed base. So I am thinking that it might be time to make the Master Infusion Crystal, because I keep putting it off and we keep manually crafting all of these different tiers of essence, which we would still have to do with the Master Infusion Crystal, but right now I don't actually have the first tier of infusion crystal and so if i wanted to get the tertium required here i would have to go through again the whole rigmarole of making yet more of these prosperity gemstones getting more inferium essence crafting at least a block of inferium essence like this and then crafting yet another 
Inferium Gemstone and then using that to craft yet another Infusion Crystal with yet more of the Prosperity Shards here, which is not particularly difficult to do, but we keep having to do the same thing over and over and over again every time we want to get a higher tier of Essence because of the fact that we don't have the Master Infusion Crystal. And if we are going to get towards the creative end of this mod pack, we need a lot of Insanium and a lot of Creative Essence. The Creative Essence in this pack is made with a ton of Insanium and a ton of Supremium, and of course, the aforementioned Master Infusion Crystal. And so it might not be a terrible idea for me to spend like five, 10 minutes here just crafting this up. It is gonna be a little tedious because we have to craft up four Insanium and four Supremium. And as we saw before, four Insanium is like 32 stacks of Inferium that we have to craft manually through all of the different tiers up to Insanium and up to Supremium. And every time we do that, we're gonna have to make enough of those basic Inferium infusion crystals to keep the crafts going because they can only do 265 each. But it needs to be done at some point sooner rather than later. Chant does make a good point here in that uh, we can look at getting a crafter from RF tools to make our lives just a little bit quicker here. Um, in terms of actually making the Master Infusion Crystal, and then after we have the Master Infusion Crystal, we can utilize the Crafter to automatically upcraft all of our Inferium up to Supremium or Insanium if we wanted to. So the Crafters from RF Tools are actually real fast, which is very nice indeed, and they're also fairly easy to make. We need four Iron, two Gold Nuggets, and two Blue Dye, or two Lapis in the form of Blue Dye, I should say. So we'll craft that down right away here. Uh, gold Ingots, we do now have uh, quite a few of because of our gold seeds, fantastic. And of course, iron, we also have a ton of as well. So let's make our first machine frame here just as soon as we craft some gold nuggets. And then we also need to get some sticks and some redstone for some redstone torches. And once we have those, I think we are basically good to go. We already have one crafting table because we placed it down in the last episode and getting another one is obviously not gonna be a problem. There is our first crafter. I do think it is worth upgrading this because it's so cheap to upgrade from tier one to tier two and then tier two to tier three. It's just more redstone torches and more crafting tables and the extra slots that you get are actually super beneficial. So let's make a tier two crafter and a tier three crafter. These do require power. Thankfully, we do have our solar panels over here ready to do the job. I think this might work. It totally does. The power is being pulled from the solar panel round into the crafter. We will see if this is enough power. If it's not, we could always move this solar panel to the other side potentially as well. And so the way this works is up here, we can uh, select uh, a recipe slot. This can do up to eight different crafting recipes. And in here, we can say that the infusion crystal plus four inferium equals the prudentium, apply. What we want to do here is we want to change this button. It says right now, results of the crafting operation will go to your output buffer. So I think if we were to put in one inferium crystal and four inferium, like that, it's gonna craft the Prudentium, but it's gonna put the Inferium Crystal in the output slot. We want to change this here. If we go to EXTC, now it says results of the crafting operation will go to the output buffer, but remaining items like buckets, or in our case, Infusion Crystals, will stay in. So if I were to do the same again, and drop in four Inferium Essence, it's gonna craft the Prudentium straight away. We can make this better though, because we can actually just change this to Int, and now everything will stay in the input buffer. So if I do this, it's gonna make the Prudentium, but leave it in the input buffer. That's good because it means that what we can do next is go to our next recipe slot. We can put in the Prudentium Infusion Crystal. We can get one more of the Prudentium. And then once we have the Prudentium, we can do the same again. We can change this to Int. We can go one, two, three, four, and we can hit Apply. So now if we put in the Infusion Crystal, whenever there's enough Inferium, so let's say 16 in here, it's gonna go straight into Tertium. Nice, and you can see where this is going. We can do the same again with Tertium, set it to Int, craft four of those just as soon as we get a little bit more in the way of Inferium. And so it just saves us having to craft it because now I can just dump it in and it's all automatically turned into Tertium. We can put the same recipe in from Tertium into Imperium as long as the crystal is in and we can keep doing this for Supremium and Insanium. And so going forward, we just need to manually craft the crystals, make sure that there's enough in there to allow it to keep working. But then as we acquire more Inferium, we can just come over here, dump all of that Inferium in, and you can actually click this button down here. Right now, the mode is set to slow. If we swap this to fast, it's gonna start crafting those essences even faster. Look at that, it crafts so quickly, it's great. Let's do one more here, let's do one, two, three, four. Again, make sure it's set to int and boom. So now we have a system that produces Supremium Essence automatically as we dump in the Inferium. And so I'm gonna go ahead and harvest a bunch of Inferium. I'm gonna keep crafting up more of these 
inferium crystals as and when we need them. And it shouldn't hopefully take us too long to get the full supremium that we need for the supremium infusion crystal and then the 16 extra supremium that we need to make the four insanium. All right, so we've got 20 supremium essence after quite a few inferium infusion crystals. And so I think we might be able to make this happen. If we want to make the supremium infusion crystal, we just take our previous tier infusion crystal and some prosperity shards. We should have everything to make this. We totally do. My only question, I, I think we can use this even if it's not, um, like I think we can do this or we can go and make one, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, like that. We can make four of these. And then I think we can still use this to make the master infusion crystal. We totally can. Fantastic. That is very nice to see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this out of here. I'm going to remove these recipes. And by that, I mean, I'm going to swap the recipe to use the master infusion crystal like that and hit apply. And then we can do that all the way down here. We can just swap out the master infusion crystal in the center like this. And so now going forward, we can kind of just take all of the uh, the essence. And by the way, um, I've just been deleting excess seeds at this point because we've got so many of them in this chest. We've got a ton of these inferior seeds that are all just hanging out and clogging up our inventory space. And so what I've been doing in the top left, there's a trash can. If you open that, put the seeds in and then just close it, it just gets rid of them. There's also a trash can here that you can use, but uh, the one up here is uh, better if you've got a lot of things to get rid of. But so now going forward, we can take all of our inferium and we can auto craft it up into potentially insanium right now it's just crafting up to supremium but if we need a certain tier we can just take the supremium and just craft it down you can very easily back craft this into whatever it is you need that's a lot easier than storing all of the inferium as inferium and then up crafting it when you need it i find it a lot easier to down craft as we need it as opposed to trying to up craft and of course once we have at least four supremium here we could do the same recipe for insanium essence and there's no reason to leave that at int. We can put that at uh, extc, like that, hit apply, and uh, that's just gonna go ahead and put the Insanium in the output slot. One thing I will do here is I will make sure that each essence has a slot. So what I mean by that is that if we do this and put four more of you in, now each one of these is in its slot. If you click the uh, R button here, it will remember that slot. And so now, even if all of the rest of the slots fill up with Insanium, there will always be a spare slot for, for example, Tertium, because if there isn't a slot, if you fill this up and there's not a space for, for example, Tertium to go, then it will just stop crafting. It'll get jammed up. So this kind of just uh, kind of future proofs us a little bit for when we automatically start sending Inferium over to here to start automatically creating Insanium. Of course, at some point in the future, geez, that recipe looks insane. At some point in the future, we can look at, uh, at making the creative essence that we showed earlier, but uh, for the time being, that is not something that we have available to us. Back over here, we do have a few more ender pearls now, which is quite useful because it means that we can begin replacing uh, stuff like this with elevators. So if we uh, cover this up, four ender pearls should allow us to make four elevators. To make the elevators, we just need to craft the string that we got from our silkworms into wool, and then we can craft that around an ender pearl, and we get elevators and the idea here is that we can go ahead and place the elevators in the ground let's say like this and then instead of having to use these ladders going forward we can instead put another elevator in the ground right about here and then now i can get rid of the remainder of these ladders and if we press jump we're going to jump up to the higher tier ladder and if we press shift we're going to go down to the lower tier ladder we can also uh, if we right click on the ladder here make it directional and by default, the arrow is pointing for us the correct way, but you can change this to a north, south, east, or west. Basically, whichever way this arrow is pointing is the way that the player will face when they land on it. So normally, if you go down, you will face whichever way you are already facing. So if I'm facing the chest and I go down, I face the wall, which is not what I want. If I click uh, directional and make it west, now, even if I am facing the chest, when I go down, I'll face out into the path so I can just start working forward. And even though it's not necessary, we can do the same here and set it to east so that even if by some happenstance, we walk backwards onto it and press jump. It spins us around and points us at the chest, which is ideal. Eventually, I would like to get another elevator here just to make it symmetrical. But for the time being, I do think it might be more beneficial for me to have an elevator over here to allow me to get up to the mob farm colossal chest, just because that's going to make it easier for us to get those ender pearls in the future. I do believe that uh, you can also camouflage these as well if you don't like the way they look by default. So for example, 
if I didn't like just those white cubes randomly on the base and I instead wanted them to look like obsidian, I think I could just right click them with obsidian. I can, and they change to look like obsidian. I don't know if obsidian is what I want, and you can uh, remove camouflage by right clicking and then clicking the remove camouflage button, but that is a way to make them look a little bit more uniform and in theme with the base. Chat does make a good point here in that what we could do is we could go ahead and replace one of these logs like this, and then just make it look like that log. I think it's gonna point upwards, which is really not <laughs> ideal. I think it probably looks a little bit better than having the obsidian there, but it is unfortunate the way it works. It's probably fine. Again, once we have uh, a surplus of ender pearls, I am probably gonna add, oh, it goes the way you face it. That is interesting though, because that means that we probably can make it look how we want if we right click it from the right side, which is not that side. Interesting though, the slab actually makes it look like a slab. There we go, okay, that's actually perfect because then we can just do this and if we get rid of this one, we can also do this, fantastic. And yeah, like I was about to say, in the future, we'll probably put a second one here. If we really wanted to, we could replace the whole, you know, outer edge with elevator so that wherever we go, we can just jump up like that. That would be kind of cool. But of course, right now we don't have that many ender pearls and so it's not really something that's on the cards for us. Chat is right here in that these nebulous hearts, which are dropped from Enderman, can just be crafted into ender pearls. And so we can in fact make a few more elevators here. Specifically, I would like two more over here. We do need yet more wool, but we have got a ton of string. We also don't need these crystals anymore. I can just go ahead and throw those into the trash can, but uh, that's gonna allow me to make at least two more elevators, which is gonna make this right here symmetrical. Again, we'll put uh, direction facing east and down here, we'll do the same again. We'll get rid of this block and put the direction facing west, fantastic. So now, no matter which block I'm on here, it's gonna take me down and point me in the right direction. And then I feel like I might as well grab a little bit more string out of our chest here and do at the very least one more set of elevators over by the mob farm. And there we go. So now if we just walk up to the center of this mob farm, we can jump and we get placed in front of the chest. Nice. Now that we've got access to the master infusion crystal, we can make essence a lot faster. And I am wondering if it might not be worth potentially upgrading the farmland here to maybe even like Supremium farmland. As we saw before, I think you do get more drops with higher tier farmland. And so if I test that real quick, let me take some Supremium Essence. And actually, we could even take some Insanium Essence and use that. Let me let me see. If I put that here, that upgrades it to uh, Insanium. If we uh, harvest that, how much do we get? So right now we've got, let me get rid of all of the Insanium that I have, and let me get rid of all of the seeds as well for an ultra scientific experiment. If we then go ahead and harvest that, we got four, whereas normally we get one, which is pretty great. And so if we do upgrade our farmland here, it looks like we get a guaranteed four. So I got another four there and then another four there. So upgrading all of this to Insanium would get us four times as much uh, Inferium every time we right clicked. The secondary chance is actually lower, like the seed chance is actually lower, which is actually a, a, an upgrade for us because we don't want this many seeds. So the Insanium is kind of a win-win all around. I think it's true for anything apart from Inferium. Somebody in the Twitch chat did point out that uh, it appears that the way it works is that if you place the seed down on farmland that is of the same tier of the thing you're trying to grow, then you get the extra chance. So for example, these diamonds here are tier five seeds, I believe. They are, and so they would only get the secondary output chance of 20% once they are on Supremium farmland, because Supremium is tier 5, and the Inferium is tier 1, so it gets the 20% boost on Inferium farmland. So anything above Inferium would get rid of their 20% seed boost and would take it down to a 10% seed boost, but uh, for us, that extra output of Insanium farmland is going to be quite useful, because again, basically all of the endgame items in this pack require, I think, some kind of creative essence or a lot of recipes here that require a lot of creative essence and so we are going to need a large amount of inferium for that and so given how easy it is now for us to just dump all of this in here and get more insanium essence i feel like it is potentially well worth the upgrade all right before i start grinding this out aggressively one thing i would like to get because our hunger is going down quite quickly with all of this auto mining is an auto feeding backpack so for that we need a sophisticated backpack, which is this one right here. And we need the feeding upgrade, this one right here. To make the sophisticated backpack, we do need leather. 
And we also need a leather for the feeding upgrade. So we need five leather in total, which means we could do with getting some cows. As we saw in a previous episode, we do have access to bait. And there's actually a quest for it down here for cow bait. And so over here, it says, uh, now to get animals, you will need the animal bait, cow bait, sheep bait, etc. Grow a tree and add some water around and bone meal the ground to give the environment for the animals to spawn. The grass platform is also the way to get wheat seeds, just bone meal the grass and then break it. Cool. So if we take, I think it is just two wheat and we craft that together, I think that gets us cow bait. It does. Let's take a couple of those and then let's also go ahead and get yet another oak sapling with four wood seeds and we'll also need a bucket of water as well. Our sugarcane is growing quite nicely. Thankfully, one of the benefits of SNED is that the sugarcane will just keep growing forever, I think. It'll just keep going all the way up to world height, which is very nice indeed. Once we have a tree, we then need to put down some water. Uh, I don't think it matters necessarily where you put it. I'm going to put mine right about here, and just to stop it falling into the abyss, we'll do something like that. And then if we put the cow bait down, it says this bait will work in this environment, move out of range, so you don't scare the animal away. I can put a few of these down, I think, and then... Okay, there is too many baits in this area. I don't know how close. Oh, that's fine. Okay, cool. So as long as you spread them out a bit, you can put them fairly close together. And if you don't put the tree down, by the way, or if you don't put the water down, it will say that the area is just inhabitable for the mob that you're after. But if we leave that, it shouldn't take too long for some cows to spawn, at which point we can uh, say hello to them with our iron axe here and see if we can't get some leather. Look at that. We already have one cow. It is a baby cow, which might be due to the fact that I put him down under a tree that's not tall enough for a full cow to fit under. So I might do that just to try and increase our chances of uh, of a normal cow spawning in. We can also feed the cow wheat as well, of course, to make him grow into an adult just that little bit faster. All right, we've got a couple of cows here. One more baby, which is fine. He didn't give me any leather, which is unfortunate. He gave me two leather, so he kind of made up for his friend there. And then there's three. We only need five. And so... Let's give this guy a bit of wheat to try and accelerate his growth to adulthood. And then that last one over there hopefully won't take too long. But of course, even if they do take a while, we can take some more baits here and just put even more of these down around this tree. And ooh, it's too many there. Can I put it here? I can. And eventually those are going to turn into cows. And I don't think it's going to take us too long from now to get the remaining two leather. All right, round two. Let's see if we get leather we got four which is good and there should be at least one more cow somewhere i see the baby cow here is this the one that we fed earlier i don't think it is no he's gonna take a thousand seconds you you're the one that i fed earlier pumped him up full of wheat here we go not a single piece of leather what a selfish pain in the backside <laughs> all right so now we just have this guy left to go and we've got two more cows thankfully we do have a lot of wheat seeds and of course we can grow wheat incredibly quickly we have managed to burn through all of the wheat that we did have and so while we could use this last bit of wheat to try and feed this cow he's still gonna take 20 minutes anyway and so instead i'm just gonna put down two more cow bait and hope that one of these three cows is the adult that gives us the fifth and final leather all right i see another adult cow leather no leather and then our final cow Gave us the leather. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, cool. So now that we have the six leather, we should be pretty much good to go here. Let me grab some string. And other than that, we just need a regular old chest and we are good to go. So we'll take some planks, we'll craft up the chest, and that should be everything for our sophisticated backpack. These are super nifty in that if you open them up, they have this little upgrade slot on the left. I do believe there are higher tiers of backpack. Uh, for example, I believe we can get an iron, gold, diamond, and then netherite version of the backpack, which are not too difficult to make. Not that I really think we need it, but if we wanted to, we could do something like this and like this to upgrade to iron. I think it's the exact same again to upgrade to gold. I feel like we might as well, simply due to the fact that we have so much gold and so many diamonds. We might as well go from iron to gold and then from gold to diamond. And the diamond one, I think, has more of these slots, and it's also massive as well and so we can put this on uh, in our backpack slot if we want either on our chest plate or i believe over here we can and if you press b i think it opens it by default but that key binding does appear to have been uh, rebound to something else let's go to options controls click b and get rid of everything that's not the backpack there we go so now when we press b it opens that up directly from our bobble slot there and we can put in any of these upgrades on the left. 
The one that I would like is this guy right here, the feeding upgrade. To make that, we do need one upgrade base. That seems easy enough, does require some more iron. Again, we've got infinite iron, so making the upgrade base super easy. And again, we could make more of those if we wanted to make more upgrades. Uh, something like the magnet upgrade could be quite useful for harvesting all of the Inferium. But in terms of the feeding upgrade, we need a golden apple, a golden carrot, and a glistening melon slice. Most of that I think we have. So carrot seeds are something we get from sifting dirt. So I'm fairly certain that we have some. We do indeed. Melon seeds are also something that we get from sifting dirt. And so we do indeed have some. And then apples we get from cutting down regular old trees. And so it would appear that we don't have any. However, we can, of course, take yet more of our wood essence, craft that into yet more saplings. And if we just do a little bit of tree farming, potentially over by this cow area here, we should be able to get some apples fairly quickly. It might even be worth using a crook because the crook might increase the chance of apples dropping. I think it does increase the chance of getting a sampling from a tree. And so it's possible it also increases the apple chance. We got three apples from that, which I think is more than you would normally get. And so I'm going to take that as a positive sign. Let's go ahead and plant down a carrot seed like so. That gets us our carrot. Let's go ahead and plant down a melon seed. That, of course, is a little trickier in that it's going to require that we actually have a space for it to grow. Although I think, again, the, the sprinting should accelerate it. And so I'm hoping that it just kind of plops down on that wood next to it. So this isn't growing particularly fast. I think it will get there eventually if we just leave it, but we've replaced some of the blocks around it with dirt to try and maximize the speed of, of growth here, but it's not really working. And so one thing we could do is we could get a botany pot here, and this would allow us to grow a guaranteed watermelon fairly quickly. The botany pot itself is not particularly difficult to make. It's one flower pot, which is three bricks, and then five terracotta, which is just clay smelted. And so clay we should have in the system. Never mind. We've got a very small amount of clay. That's fine. We do, of course, have a bunch of dust available from the last episode. And so if we take that with our bucket of water, we can, of course, get more clay very easily with our barrel here. Of course, never mind. Our barrel is now turning into witch water. And so instead, what we'll do is we'll quickly craft up a second barrel with some slabs and some planks. I think this is the recipe. It is indeed. Let's put that down for now, right about... um. For now, maybe right next to the pre-existing one. And we'll use that to get our clay. And then one other thing we can do here, potentially, is we can upgrade our Inferium Furnace to a higher tier furnace to make it even faster. The Prudentium Furnace isn't too expensive here. Again, if we take an Insanium and we just downcraft it through all of the different tiers, we can get a ton of Prudentium. We don't need that much. I'll take 16 for now, and we'll craft a block of Prudentium. And then we needed two Prudentium ingots, which are just two Prosperity ingots, which, as always, is just iron and Prosperity shards. We have both of those in abundance, and so let's quickly go ahead and do something like this. I'm going to craft all 16 of those, because I think we will go past Prudentium here. I feel like there's no reason to stop at Prudentium. We'll take two of those, and we'll get an upgraded furnace. Of course, it does require the pre-existing furnace for that upgrade. That's fine. And then if we do the same again with tertium, we'll take a block of tertium, and then we'll make two tertium ingots, one and two. That should be everything for the tertium furnace. And then we can throw all of this essence back in here, like that, and that gets us the insanium again, which we can take and craft down to get the imperium. Again, I think 12 might even be enough here because we need nine for the block. Oh, no, we do need a little bit more than 12. We need one more one more down craft. There we go. Because then we can once again craft up the ingots like this. Get two of those. That gets us the Imperium Furnace. And then if we have what it takes, which we don't, we could have made the Supreme Furnace. But either way, the Imperium Furnace here is 690% faster than a base Minecraft Furnace. And so if we put it down with the clay, it's going to smelt that substantially faster than our old furnace would have. And one more block of clay here is going to get us the five terracotta that we need. And then one more clay on top of that, that we break down into good old fashioned clay bowls is going to get us all of the brick that we need in order to make the flower pot. And so if we take this and we do one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, we get a botany pot that for now we can place down anywhere really and what we're going to do is we're going to put dirt into there like so and then we're going to put in a melon seed 
like so. And you'll see on the left there that it says grow time is one minute and 30 seconds. But unlike regular watermelons, you can actually bone meal the body pots. And so if we bone meal that all the way to full growth, we then get a watermelon. Nice. We can take that, place it down on the ground and harvest it into melon slices. So now we have that, it's just a case of taking some of our gold, which we're gonna craft down into golden nuggets. We're going to need at least 24 of those so we can get ourselves a golden apple, uh, which is actually gold ingots, not golden nuggets, that's my bad, like this. A golden carrot, which I think is golden nuggets. It is. And the glistening melon, which is also golden nuggets. And then the final thing we need that we might actually not have, but I'm really hoping we do, is an ender pearl. Let's go and once again, check our mob farm here. We do indeed, we've got three there. And we might also have, we don't, I was wondering if we had any of those uh, hearts that we used earlier for ender pearls. We don't, that's fine. Let's go and utilize uh, this ender pearl. We do need to eat, but I'm gonna wait to show our backpack doing it. We can do this and this. And now if we place this into here, basically what this is going to allow us to do is auto feed. The way it works, you just put food into the backpack. Right now we are pretty hungry. If I put my bread in here, the backpack should just feed me the bread. Nice. And so we do need to make sure that we keep food in the backpack. And it's probably gonna be in our best interest to maybe look for a better source of food that we can just load up our backpack with. Although to be honest, if we wanted to, we could just get a wheat farm down again because right now our wheat is actually not down anywhere. We could use one of these, get a bunch of wheat, just fill the backpack with bread and then probably not have to worry about it for the remainder of the series. Alternatively, people are suggesting that a magnet upgrade might not be a terrible idea. Magnets items into backpack at range. This doesn't seem too difficult. And if we get the magnet upgrade, we can then just automatically take all of the essence that we're gathering here and it will just go into our backpack. And our backpack is of course much bigger than our main inventory. And so we can do a much bigger dump into the crafter every time we go to craft it down. And so for this, we do need another leather, which I'm pretty sure we have. I think we have one extra. That's gonna let us craft yet another upgrade base. If we want to craft that into a pickup upgrade, mix backpack pickup items. So I guess, I wonder what the difference is there. I wonder if it's just the uh, the range is the difference potentially. Uh, this does require a sticky piston, which we obviously don't have just yet, but much like we did previously with the vector plates, we can utilize the smeltery here to get coagulated blood and then use that coagulated blood as a slime ball alternative. I did also just notice that we do actually have four ender pearls inside of our colossal chest as well. And so we don't really have to worry too much about uh, not having enough in the mob farm. Do need to make sure you take the ingot cast out, pull out the coagulated blood. Boom, there is our piston and boom, there is our sticky piston. And that is everything for the pickup upgrade. And then for the magnet upgrade, we just need one lapis and two ender pearls. Again, we have four in here, lapis we have, and I think that is everything. It is indeed the advanced magnet upgrade Magnet's items into the backpack at a greater range has more filtering options. I don't know if we need it. Let's have a look. We'll put this in and then we'll give this a try. If I harvest all of this, that did go into the backpack. And so now if I just sprint around holding down my Ultimine key, we can of course get rid of this. It's no longer needed. And we can fix that hole in the wall as well. If we do something like this and like that, we can get rid of those. And we can of course re these into farmland. But now we should be able to do a surprising amount of harvesting before our inventory fills up. You'll see that none of what we're harvesting here is going into our inventory. It's all going into the backpack, which is also keeping us full. It's gonna feed us every time our hunger dips. And so we should be able to do this for a prolonged period of time. And then whenever our backpack fills up, which is already doing pretty quickly, we can just head on over to the crafter, dump it all in at once and get however much insanium we get from that. And then use that, of course, to continue expanding out our farm. Right now we've got maybe 15 uh, insanium farmland down, but the more we do this, it kind of gets exponentially faster because we get more and more inferium from all of that insanium farmland and once it starts getting exponentially faster then we should start to fill this up very quickly at which point we can get you know as much insanium as we like in a relatively small period of time which is really nifty look at this we've got so much of it uh, we can go ahead and sort it which is nice it puts all the seeds at the bottom and then we can just harvest all of this and then drop it all into here as per usual this is going to be a little easier if our inventory is not full and so we can just grab all of this and then drop it all 
in here and do the same over and over again until we've dumped it all. Nice. And of course, we do want to make sure that periodically we do take out all of these seeds and just go ahead and dump them into the trash can. Nice. Okay, so that goes four more. Between streams, I'm gonna go ahead and continue doing more of this to fill this up. I don't know if we strictly need all of them to be insanium. Uh, at some point, we will end up looking at replacing these big plots of farming with automated farming. And so at that point, we can uh, hopefully reuse some of this insanium farmland for that purpose. But that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, that's probably going to be the end of today's episode there. Next time, we'll come back. I think the first thing we'll do is look at getting a simple refined storage system up and running. We can hopefully power that with one of our solar panels here. It does appear that this solar panel has been doing a perfectly fine job on the crafter, which is good to see. We'll use this solar panel, I think, to power a basic refined storage system. And then once we have that basic refined storage system, we can then look at getting a much better source of power. Once we have a better source of power, we could potentially look into power pots. This is a mod from FTB, and this allows us to grow crops insanely quickly in a very small space. It's a one block space as opposed to these giant farms that we currently have. And once we have access to those, we should be able to really start to increase our resource production, which is what we're going to need if we're going to complete some of these creative items towards the end of the pack. But for now, as I said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Mystical Block there.